All right. This is crazy. So, Rocco, we only have you for uh, X amount of time. So let's move on yes. to your topic. Okay, so my topic is uh, it's coming around right now because of the fact that we're dealing with our president elect, Donald Trump, who believes that. Uh, so my topic is on global warming. Okay. Our president elect is coming into the White House starting in January. He does not believe that global warming is real. He believes that it is a hoax created by the Chinese government so that they could put regulations in on the American industry so that they could get ahead of the game, essentially. Right? I think that's a bit ridiculous, especially because the entire science community has came together to say that global warming is a real thing. Not even the science community coming together, but the fact that we can see things in our own lives today about how warm our own environments have gotten over the span of 10 years, where our winters aren't as cold or they're not coming around as soon as they used to. We can see these on our own lives as yeah. well as in research. So an example of that is that North Pole is 30 degrees warmer right now in the wintertime than it's ever that. been before. Yeah. Okay, so this is showing that global warming is a real thing. Okay, so that so for our president to be sitting there and saying that it's a hoax, this scares me. Mm, yeah. And now that scares me on a large scale more than it does with like the terrorism or this or that. Because when we're talking about global warming, we're talking about the entire world and that right. it can end the human existence. And I have children with a family, so the future is very, very important for me. And I want to make sure that we're taking steps to make this not a situation where we all burn on this planet. We together. can't have we can't have a Hurricane Sandy every year. We can't have a Hurricane no. Katrina every year. Nope. Um, it would just destroy our country slowly. Um, I mean, you, it, there's global war like there's global warming, and there's also like fracking yep. can cause like certain yep. earthquakes. Like there's a lot of stuff that we're yep. doing. Um, yeah, there's yeah. I'm not saying you know we're we're good for the environment. We're technically a bacteria of the world. But <laughs> think about this. I I mean, I I haven't done extensive research as you as have Rocco. But things that I've learned in the past is that the Earth. If you look historically, has always gone through cycles of uh, warming and cooling off. Yep. So we could just be going through a normal warming up period, and then eventually. It'll okay, go so through. to that point, you're right, as in the sense of the world has gone through these periods. Mm -hmm. But what we have seen from that data compared to what we're doing right now, we've seen that we have sped up that rate exponentially yep. by like thousands and thousands of times the yep. rate of what we're you did normally naturally. Because of the fact of how much CO2 released in the world, we are then speeding up the, the warming process, which is releasing more CO2 from the frozen ice that is melting because of what we're actually doing. Right. And you can see they have CO2 uh, maps, uh, like almost like heat maps, and you can see giant holes inside them, and that's what's causing the increased heat. The only thing, right. the only thing to my knowledge that can repair the, the CO2 shield or the sh – the CO2 destroys, like, the the, the, Atmos the, the atmospheric atmosphere. shield that protects us from UV rays and, and excess heat. Um, the only thing that can destroy or repair that is uh, lightning. Uh, so is that what I said? That's, that's my understanding, and I could be okay. completely wrong um, yeah. as of now. But I do remember uh, watching, like, it being repaired through, like, natural uh, occurrences gotcha. of, like, lightning stuff. But, like, it's just not repairing quick enough. We are by far, like Rocco said speeding up uh this this process you i'm looking at so in the global warming like he thinks it's a host but it's really funny because the united nations uh climate for change conference happened last in 2015 in mm -hmm. paris and they had they brought in a ton of countries together to unite under a set group of policies that will help reduce global warming and get the world kind of back on track and slow down this process that we have sped up and you look at the, the CO2 emissions, China's off the charts. Uh, off the charts. The, off the charts. The next two big ones are United States and the European Union, which has 28 different countries. Then you yep. have India, Russia, Japan, Germany, South Korea. Um, you have you have international shipping, Canada, United Kingdom, Brazil. And like these things are like now tiny compared to the United States. And China's about uh, double the amount of what the United States does. Um, so it's really interesting uh, to see uh, that... He thinks it's a host, yet uh, all these nations and scientists have come together to be like, look, this is what we're going to do. Uh, so now he said a lot of things that he seems to be backtracking on, which I find I find fascinating on so many different layers. But uh, we'll see, like, I don't think he hasn't yet 
backtrack on this. And so whether it's uh, we're not going to do it anymore or, uh, well, we need to renegotiate so that we don't have to do as much regulation or something like that because his his <coughs> transition team um, – has very much a deregulation of government a part of it, right? It's a it's an alt right, uh, somewhat uh, cons- like old conservative mentality in some ways. Uh, in some ways, it's not. Some ways, it's it's moderate, and some ways, it's very. Um, it's just, there's some there's some things that the, the Democrats uh, would would uh, would like this right. as well. Um, it's oh, a mixed bag. Um, so, so yeah, he believes you know it's a host. I think it's absolutely a problem, uh, and we're seeing it in the form of uh, we're seeing it in the form of just uh, sea level rises. We're seeing it in the form well, of mass uh, destructive storms every year. Uh, we're seeing it in wildlife uh, destruction. We're seeing it all over the place. Yep. So, so I'm just looking up some uh, myths and facts about global warming because I know that it's a very polarized topic, and um, I understand that there is a scientific community that is all about you know that global warming is there. But there's also part of the scientific community that calls it a hoax. Also, they're a um, minority, though. So. Yeah, I know, I know. But some things that I'm hearing, uh, I'm reading and seeing here is that like um, unpre. Um, Unprecedented melting of ice is taking place in both north and south polar regions. Mm-hmm. They're saying that's a myth. And now one thing they say is that both uh, Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets are growing in thickness and cooling at their summit. So and they're saying that the uh, the sea ice around the Antarctic uh, attained a record area in 2007. So they're saying that it was a record size in 2007 and that it actually wasn't melting off. Uh, that- that, that's like directly conflicting with the reports that we have read in that it's no, melted know. and I mean <clears throat> you have sea levels rising those sea levels like that water has to come from somewhere right mm-hmm. uh, and that's coming from the ice caps because of it's melting there's like images of what it look uh, what, what North uh, Antarctica looked like mm-hmm. uh, 10 years ago and then what it looks like now in like the current time of year and it's just it's just polar bears, like, <laughs> on grass as opposed to a ton of, like, snow, right? So uh, here's right. another thing, too, as well. They, the uh, I forget what movie it was recently. I think it was Leonardo DiCaprio was doing a movie where they were looking for ice forever. They were, like, trying to find a good shot location for it, and they were, they were discovering the, the effects of uh, global warming because of the fact that they couldn't find a location um, that was looking giving off this this – ice feel that they were looking for because they they were not finding it because mm-hmm. it was melting off another thing too that worries me with this guys is the lack of forethought the lack of forethought about the future right we have done terribly as a country to think about if we do this today what will happen down the road right we have been as a country as a whole we've been making decisions about the immediate like we just want stuff now. We want stuff now, not caring about what happens later on. That's the human race. They've been doing. We've been doing this forever. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. So, like, we have to get off of this perspective, especially with something so big like global warming, for example. We have to start thinking about what we can do today to reduce what's going to happen later in the future, or to make stop a stop driving, change. Rocco. Well, or <laughs> so that's where it get gets out of the car and that's, walk. So here, here's where it gets political, right? Is yeah. Donald Trump won on the backs of the Rust Belt? And middle of America, which uh, for a large part is is uh, agriculture, lumbering, and coal. And coal is is a, in a big way, and like oil, right, is a big uh, industry that thrives on these um, not so green uh, environmental yeah. things. So, okay, by admitting that climate change is something that they need to fight, would in some ways admit that he needs to reduce the usage. Of all of that, right? And that would go against his platform base that has voted for him, which are people who really want jobs who are working these coal mines and working on these oil uh, rigs. So, you know, it is a shame. Sorry for the for the noise, but it is a shame. Uh, but what do you do? Like, and, and I sympathize with all these people who are hearing this, and I see how it can be very easy to want to, because if you believe in climate change but you work in a coal mine you're, you're basically admitting that like your okay. job needs to stop and that's got to be really so, hard for someone to come to so i guess at the end of the day when you're really trying to get to the point of like getting yourself off of fossil fuels we have to be very we have to understand that it's like 
they have their hands so deep in the pockets of every politician we can imagine. So it, yeah. it's going to be hard for us to get off of fossil fuels. But why can't we not have, even if you were an advocate that says that it's a hoax for uh, global warming, why can you not still then say, fine, it's a hoax, but let's increase our, uh, what we allow for, geez, man, this, this, I'm sorry, I'm crossing a railroad and the railroad thing was down, but there's no train coming. So it made me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, anyway, so why can't we still have things like fossil fuels say, okay, you're going to have your coal mines and this and that, even though I know that those are ruining and, and it, it's, it's creating to be faster, but with a guy who says that that's all a hoax anyways, say, let's create, you want to create more jobs, let's create more jobs in the green industry as well. We're not to say we'll take away or hinder whatsoever in the fossil fuel area because you believe it's a joke, which I don't, but still yeah, but create if you, if you're, more if your jobs goal like is to solar re- power and other things too as well to create more power out there from different areas, not just to not just oil only or coal only, but right. now even clean energies too. Like why, why be so opposed to the idea of clean energy just because you're opposed to the idea of global warming? That well, shouldn't go hand in hand together. Yeah, I mean know. they do though. They do in a lot of ways because if you look at if you look at you know you're building cars for even the car industry is impacted by this, right? Are you going to make electric cars? Or are you going to make traditional cars? But um, why not make them anyways? Is my point. Why not make both? Not saying so. Like again, because it's it's, it's in some ways like, it's a zero sum game. There's only so many people to buy cars, and yeah. if you have X, like you have to replace at this point. What are you yeah. going to pr- replace? It with and it's going to be the it, in my mind I can be completely wrong but in my mind it's the coal and it's the it's the oil like it needs to be replaced with green energy. Well, um, no, no, no. I agree with you. Okay, I agree with you, and it should be. But when you're talking about we have a president who doesn't agree with either one of us at all whatsoever, right, and wants to just stick with coal and with fossil fuels only. Yeah. Then I, why can't why like, why he? I mean, even in the if he's trying to create jobs and let's say he's not doing electric cars. What if he starts doing like? Well, because the, because that's just it. Is like if he's going to create jobs, the first thing he's going to do, in my opinion, is not going to be towards green energy. Like these people, it's it's not that they're like they are worried about their job, but they also don't have jobs. Yeah. There's a there's a there's two big portions of that. There's those who are worried about their jobs because they see all the other people who can't get jobs in the Rust Belt. These people want more coal jobs. They want more lumber jobs. They want more of these jobs that will bring like. And so, f- if he were to even put his attention towards the green energy, that that's going to piss off all those people. So he needs to get more coal mining, more Unless which means he to go hired against those individuals that don't have jobs right now that were supposed to be working in the coal mines to build solar fields. How they don't have any experience, and a lot of them don't even want to do that. They want their old yeah. job back. So yeah. it's really, it's really convoluted. And the other point I just found is that like this, this affects, and I, I think, I think it, it's, it's pretty complicated, right? Because they, I don't think they understand either, and and it sucks that they're not willing, or we can't figure out a way to have these people have jobs towards green energy, like built, like, and you know, this is partly on the CEOs, like. The president-elect needs to talk to CEOs like Elon Musk and be like, "Look, we have a problem. You want you want to do certain like green energy projects. I need your help in convincing all of these people in the Midwest that need jobs that they will be excited and want to work for you to build green energy. Like, I need your help to do that because they don't see. They just want their old stuff back. They don't really mm-hmm. grass is like not greener for them. They want to stick with the devil they know, right? I understand. Well, I, yeah. Because and the I, other thing here is that you're looking at Greenland. I'm. I'm pulling up a port, a report that says they're suffering from global warming too. Greenland has been warmer and warmer each year, and their animals are sometimes like five pounds lighter. And that's that is thousands of dollars lost for every single animal that's like not the five pounds that they could potentially sell it for, right? And it goes right. into their crops as well. If their crops are not growing to the to the size, um, or that's having the other thing I was going to say is like it, when we can we can see this in the droughts, for right. example, too. And, and when we're talking about like global warming. For example, we have had massive droughts out here in Georgia. We have had almost the entire month, a month and a half, maybe even longer without any rain whatsoever. We had in Alabama, we had a, uh, a uh, forest fire going on in North Carolina, in Tennessee, and in North Georgia. Four huge fires going on all at the same time because of the drought. Right. Now, we had winds blowing in. The city of Atlanta looked like it was a massive fog day for an entire week last week. Right. But it was all smoke, smoke, forest fires all around in these four different states around us and even one in our state. Yeah. Uh, and we're talking about 13,000 acres of forest that have been burned up because of these droughts. I was getting hit this. with stuff like that, too. 
Exactly. So because country. of this global warming, this happening, this occurring, droughts have been on the rise dramatically, <clears throat> which are causing all these other effects to happen. This is the butterfly effect. What people don't see, this is what I say about it's, forethought. Seeing what we're doing right, right now, the, the butterfly effect of like you do one thing down no, the road. No, that's a down rippling down effect. Down. Yeah. Okay, butterfly effect, effect is if you go back yeah. in time, you touch something and it changes everything for the future. No, butterfly yes. effect is a ripple effect. It's like if the butterfly oh. flaps its wings no, in, no, 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 in no. Japan, a butterfly the tsunami f- happens in the other side of the world. A butterfly effect is a ripple effect. A ripple effect does not necessarily mean it's a butterfly effect. A butterfly okay. effect is a type of ripple. Okay, gotcha. But it is one that well, is then, done in the then past Then a ripple to effect the in the sense of like... There's a movie that Yes, we, we don't do this one thing here. This happens, this happens, this happens. And all these other things are connected where you don't even think about drought being connected to it. You don't think about yeah. forest fires being connected to it. Right. You don't think about all these things that are happening today right. that we are experiencing. We're like, gosh, this is the end of the world. This is what people <clears throat> here in the South say. It's the yeah. end of the world. It's the end of the world. No, it's not the end of the world. It's us being stupid. We are going to lead to that. But, you know, yeah. you can't you can't really expect people – like I said, that they just they just care about jobs. They don't care how it happens, but they want their job back. Um, and they're, I mean, that, and we have to hold someone like the president-elect and the CEOs and the big corporations for the amount of money they get to to put it on their shoulders to figure out these problems and connect these threads and fix them. And it's interesting because you do have Donald Trump threatening to remove themselves from the North, uh, the the United Nations. Um, uh, 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 I forget what it's called, the council or whatever, to to, to um, lower the emissions and all that stuff for global warming. And you have you have like 50 or so, how many of it? Hundreds of U.S. businesses urge Trump to uphold Paris climate deal. You, mm-hmm. Like, and, and, and we're getting more political as we talk about this, but this is a worry of mine with the type of, you know, cabinet that we're running with, right? People are wasting their time trying to convince someone of something that's already been pretty much proven to, to go and move forward, but they're spending their time arguing for the most part. So how much time is going to be wasted just trying to convince this guy? I mean, this is the same guy that thought Barack Obama was not, the president of the United States was not born in the United States until just a couple months ago. Until September. He, he spent eight years yeah. spouting that shit? Yeah. And then he Very finally true. admitted it in September. <laughs> because he finally saw the papers. It wasn't He's because like, he okay, had a okay, come Jesus not, moment. It's because someone like, showed okay. him. <laughs> well, and I, I think that there is um, some strive towards solar energy. I mean, just like here down in Florida, we just passed a bill that – or an amendment that – or actually, we didn't pass it. I apologize. We, we, um, we voted against it, which was going to hinder solar energy. So the people, I think – are acting They're, towards well, that's trying why I was to, saying to that fix I think, these issues. I, I agree with Ian here, and this is why I was saying I think they might want to fix these issues even in the Midwest. They, you know, because of the fact that you're talking about if I get yeah. myself on solar power, I don't have an electric, I don't have an electricity bill. A lot of people would be happy about that idea, and more, and they'd be very willing to get, you know, into solar if they can eliminate another extra utility bill. Yeah, because yeah. they're doing it. You know, we've talked about this tons of times in the past. Elon Musk wants to turn that electric bill into a positive. Could you imagine getting a a check for a hundred bucks every month because you're storing electricity that you're giving to plants? So that's your argument or your discussion or your sales pitch that you say Elon Musk gives to the Midwest, right? Yeah. That's the one they give. They go, hey, listen, do you guys like paying $200 a month or $150 a month for your electricity? No. Well, how about you make $100? And the only way to do this is we have to switch and convert what we have going on right now to clean energy. Right. And And they go – Fine, I work for the coal industry, but I'm totally cool with getting an extra $100 because I have solar panel. But it's not – it's very complicated to try to t- t- tell millions of people that like – No, I but get people, it. But people start to adjust, okay? If if you're in an industry that starts to go south and you see a job over here at this other industry where you could actually probably make more money, you will sit there and learn. And I mean maybe, the but – The workforce will, will eventually retire and other people will grow into it. Absolutely. You know, I just think that's going to be a struggling transition. Like these people are in their fifties. They really want to retire soon. They don't necessarily want to have to learn a whole new skill. They don't want to start from the bottom. Like they I understand their stubbornness and the will to just want something very simple, which is to just get my job back. Like yeah. I don't care about the two generations. I just want my job back so I can retire. And like, while I don't necessarily agree with that mentality, I absolutely understand how someone could have that mentality right. at that age or in that position because I get it, man. You just, Occam's razor. You just want the simplest thing because that's what makes sense to you. Like that's all you want. And hey so guys, I'm gonna have to roll. To, by the way, 
Darn it, we didn't get the political correctness. Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we, we can, we can uh, jump to a different topic. How about that? All right, you guys have a good one. Okay. See ya. Peace. See ya. All right. Uh, very interesting. Uh, yeah. Really good stuff. I'm going to redo heads, or people are going to have to stare at your mouth the entire time. Hey, guys. Hey, dudes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll take a little intermission real quick, and we're going to pop back. Yeah, inter intermission? Pop back now, man. No, we're rolling like with it. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Well, let's roll you with just, it. Just keep talking until we're ready. I could rap. You could rap. Or I could beatbox. Mm. Or you could beatbox. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We are the Maelstrom Gamers. Oh, man. We might have to take that intermission. <laughs> 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 I am terrible. Yeah. That, that is, it's okay. I am I am not. I am equally as bad. Uh, okay. Well, um, then, then I feel better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> um, ah, crap. Okay, so our next topic was gonna. Okay. Well, uh, while we're on this, okay. Oh man, now, there was there's one more thing I was gonna mention. That, that's fine. And uh, be, right before you do, I just wanted to let you know, like I didn't just pull that thing out of my ass. It was actually something I kind of just looked up here real quick while you guys were talking. Yeah. This was actually um, things that were written and researched by a Robert Carter. Uh, mm -hmm. Who's a research professional uh, professor at James Cook University in Queenland? It sounds like a and uh, at another university of Adelaide in yep. South Australia. So, like, and he he's like I guess a marine geologist and environmental scientist, and he wrote a book about myths and facts of global warming. Granted, it seems like he's I'm not going to say on the fence. He's saying yes, there are some things, but there's things that are being blown out of proportion, and people mm -hmm. are saying. Because you could sit there, okay, just like on any chart. People are like, oh, in, in 2020, the temperature is going to be way up here. Well, yeah, that's if it just keeps going at that constant. But that's not how it always works. Mm -hmm. Things go up and down, up mm -hmm. and down constantly. So there was times in the Earth's atmospheric – I again, I didn't do crazy research. I'm not a professional at this shit. Yeah. But it does hit peaks and valleys of heat and coolness. So – <clears throat> yes, I think that we are damaging the uh, atmosphere and creating probably some more warmth, but I don't think it's to the extent as some of these extreme people are going crazy about. Mm. Yeah, That's I'm, just my thoughts. No, I think – and I really um, appreciate it's not a strong enough word. I think it's necessary to have uh, that kind of counter argument, and it's a good one. Mm -hmm. because or else we just start spitting and agreeing with each other so yeah i think you make some really good points and i can absolutely see a hyperbolic uh rhetoric coming from that uh that side uh, and and maybe it's because without it it doesn't seem dire enough and they won't move the chains uh, I, soon I, enough but and i definitely want to see green energy i want to see all that just because a it is better for the environment it um it definitely helps people, I believe, more. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to create jobs. Granted, yes, it will take jobs from other fields by lowering the dependency on, you know, uh, electric companies and everything. But if you think about it, like in a big picture, the ele electric companies are sitting there, depending on how they produce their energy, mm -hmm. are spitting out energy to all these houses. So it's just a bunch of wires and going to houses. Great. Yeah, a big grid, and it's going to the houses, and everyone's paying this per this entity that's going like this. Instead, have all of these become the power, send well, it to the power. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, and that that'll be great. Um, it lowers the expenses of a household. Yeah, it, it lowers. <clears throat> yeah, the the damaging effects of the uh, the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and deny that. You know, of course, we're sitting there burning coal and all this other shit. That go just goes into the atmosphere. Yeah, it's going to damage it. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, lithium, which is a source of a lot of the "quote unquote" green energy, right. um, is also like should be noted. It's better than oil and coal, but it's not perfect either. No, it's not no. completely green, like some people might believe. There are definitely problems with its process, and there's definitely problems with what it emits or how you get rid of it. Um, but it is a step in the right direction in that it is it is better, relatively speaking than the current status quo. So um, just One, just as a reminder out there, right, everybody's like, no, we're, we'll be completely fine if we stick with listening. It's like, well, not really, yeah. but it is a, a step in the right direction. Exactly. And I mean, I, even uh, wave energy. I mean, if you think about that, that's just pretty much created by by nature. You know, that coming yeah. in could well, affect 
a wheel that turns that powers something. That that ultimately is what we should be striving for. Right. You know, um, and yeah. Oh my god. I've I've seen like concept art of that and it's an insane like cool. giant wheel in the bottom of the ocean and there's just a, like just a farm of them. And yeah. they're all turning because the 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 current of the ocean and it's just like it's so cool looking. But then then you got to think okay, does that damage the the oh, right. yeah. i guess the life of the sea and then boom you know everything is going to have some cause and effect nothing is going to be perfect yeah but we could at least incorporate maybe all of it mm-hmm. to work together where it only has a very small impact mm-hmm. on each one of those instead of just oh hey we're going to just go destroy the the ocean floors or right. Right. just farm a lithium and just destroy the earth you know yeah but i think i think a uh, diversified energy plan would be the best way to go cool man good stuff burn on this planet we can't have we can't have a hurricane sandy every year we can't have a hurricane katrina every year um it would just destroy our country slowly um i mean you there's global war like there's global warming and there's also like fracting Yep. can cause like certain yep. earthquakes like there's a lot of stuff that we're yep. doing um, yeah there's yeah i'm not saying you know we're we're good for the environment we're technically a bacteria of the world but <laughs> think about this i i mean i i haven't done extensive research as you as have rocco but things that i've learned in the past is that the earth if you look historically has always gone through cycles of uh warming and cooling off yep. so we could just be going through a normal warming up period and then eventually... It'll okay, go so through. to that point, you're right as in the sense of the world has gone through these periods. Mm-hmm. But what we have seen from that data compared to what we're doing right now, we've seen that we have sped up that rate exponentially. By like, like, it's just not repairing quick enough. We are by far, like Rocco said, speeding up uh, this, this process. You, I'm looking at... So in the global warming, like... He thinks it's a host, but it's really funny because the United Nations uh, Climate for Change conference happened last in 2015 in mm-hmm. Paris, and they had they had brought in a ton of countries together to unite under a set group of policies that will help reduce global warming and get the world kind of back on track and slow down this process that we have sped up. And, and you look at the, the CO2 emissions, China's off the charts. Uh, off the charts. The, off the charts. The next two big ones are United States and the European Union, which has 28 different countries. Then you yep. have India, Russia, Japan, Germany, South Korea. Um, you have you have international shipping, Canada, United Kingdom, Brazil. And like these things are like now tiny compared to the United States. And China is about... Uh, like thousands and thousands of times the yep. rate of what you did normally, naturally. Because of the fact of how much CO2 released in the world, we are then speeding up the, the warming process, which is releasing more CO2 from the frozen ice that is melting because of what we're actually doing. Right. And you can see they have CO2 uh, maps, uh, like almost like heat maps, and you can see giant holes inside them, and that's what's causing the increased heat. The only thing, right. the only thing to my knowledge that can repair the, the CO2 shield or the sh- – the CO2 destroys, like, the the, 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 the atmospheric atmosphere. shield that protects us from UV rays and, and excess heat. Um, the only thing that can destroy or repair that is uh, lightning. Uh, so is that what I said? That's, that's my understanding, and I could be okay. completely wrong um, yeah. as of now. But I do remember uh, watching, like, it being repaired through, like, natural uh, occurrences gotcha. of, like, lightning stuff. But All right, this is crazy. So, Rocco, we only have you for uh, X amount of time, so let's move on yes. to your topic. Okay, so my topic is, uh, it's coming around right now because of the fact that we're dealing with our president-elect, Donald Trump, who believes that, uh, so my topic is on global warming, okay? Our president-elect is coming into the White House starting in January. He does not believe that global warming is real. He believes that it is a hoax created by the Chinese government so that they could put regulations in on the American industry yeah. so that they could get ahead of the game, essentially. Right? right? Yeah. I think that's a bit ridiculous, especially because the entire science community has came together to say that global warming is a real thing. Not yeah. even the science community coming together, but the fact that we can see things in our own lives today about how warm our own environments have gotten over 
in the span of 10 years where our winters aren't as cold or they're not coming around as soon as they used to. We can see these on our own lives as yeah. well as in research. So an example of that is that North Pole is 30 degrees warmer right now in the wintertime than it's I ever been before. Yeah. Okay, so this is showing that global warming is a real thing. Okay, so that so for our president to be sitting there and saying that it's a hoax, this scares me. Mm, and yeah. now that scares me on a large scale more than it does with like the terrorism or this or that. Because when we're talking about global warming, we're talking about the entire world and that right. it can end the human existence. And I have children with a family, so the future is very, very important for me. And I want to make sure that we're taking steps to make this not a situation where we all burn.